Hi, welcome to World of Music in Erie, Pennsylvania, and our first ever video blog. I'm Steve, and I live here in the drum department, and I'm going to be uh, answering all your questions that you guys posted on Facebook uh, the best way I can. So let's get right down to it. First question I have comes from Chris, and he was asking me what's the uh, best mic placement of a drum, on the top or on the bottom hit. Uh, basically, what you always want to do is mic from the top, that way you get the most attack, the most impact uh, from each drum. Now back in the uh, 60s, 70s, what you saw a lot of the time was toms with one top head and an open bottom, and they would stick the microphone up inside. Well, as recording technology got better and the microphones got better, um, the trend definitely shifted to heads on the top and bottom. That way you get the nice full sound out of each drum. Uh, for toms and snare, a good recommendation that I have these mics right here. These are Sennheiser E604s. They are uh, a condenser mic. They're made specifically for drums, but you can use them for uh, saxophones or trumpets or anything like that. Uh, great uh, versatility for drums. A rim clip is included. So all you gotta do is clip that right onto there and then use the knob and the hinge to get the mic into position. And once you're set, plug it in and you're ready to go. Stock for bottom heads for toms. We got the Aquarian Classic Clear. We've got Remo Clear Ambassadors. We've got Evans Clear G1s. And these are all basic single ply tom heads uh, for the bottom. Uh, you never want to put a double ply head on the bottom of a tom. It loses a lot of the brightness and, and, and the tone that you want from the drum. If you want your uh, bottom heads to look a little bit meaner, we got the Remo Black Ambassadors as well. And for snare drums, you want something thin. And, and snare drum bottom heads are, are very, very specifically made just for that purpose. They're the thinnest head on the whole set, so you never want to put this on the top as a batter head and hit it, because it'll break instantly. Uh, they need to be thin for sensitivity, for the wires to, um, to snap the way they should. Okay. Always a good choice, Remo Hazy Ambassador. Evans and Aquarian also make great bottom snare heads too. All of which are in stock. Thanks guys. Next question I have was from Calvin. And uh, Calvin asked me, uh, how often should I replace my bottom heads? Um, the answer is different depending on which drum you ask. Charlie Watts from the Rolling Stones has the same bottom heads on his drums that he's had for 20, 25 years. Uh, Trey Cool from Green Day has his top and bottom heads replaced before every show. So it really depends on uh, what you need it to do. My answer is, change your bottom head when it stops sounding good. Now, right here, I have a tom, and by just tapping around the edge here, you can tell it's got a lot of ring and that boing that you hear when a newer head is on. So this one's still got a lot of life left in it. On a snare drum, though, it's always a good idea to change the bottom head a little bit more often because this is the drum that gets used the most and this bottom head carries the most tension of any head on the whole set. So here's a good example of a head that needs changed. It's been over tensioned and the rim is uh, kind of flush with the, with the bottom of the drum shell. And uh, by the way, we've got a little hole in here too, so that head definitely needs changed. Okay, the next question comes from Lizzie and Lizzie asks, uh, where in Erie are the best band sticks that are colored? Um, I'm going to assume, Lizzie, that you're talking about marching band sticks. And uh, when you're talking about marching band sticks, what you want to look for is usually some kind of brightly colored, usually white, stick. So it shows up on the field uh, really well under lights. And we do have uh, something like this. These are the Vic Firth Ralph Hardeman signatures. Okay, They're painted white, so you don't have to uh, use a whole roll of tape and add a bunch of weight to it. And uh, there's a lot of sticks that are, that are painted in different colors. Here we have the Zildjian Travis Barkers, the Zildjian Adrian Youngs, and again, these are signature sticks, so these are designed by the artist's specifications. We've also got the Thomas Langs from Vic Firth, and also from Vic Firth, probably the most popular sticks we carry are the Dave Weckl signatures, which are burgundy and then the Steve Gadd signatures. Now this was Vic Firth's original signature stick, and uh, of course they're black. Um, so we got a lot of choices in stock. Pink 5As as well. So 
we definitely have a lot of colored sticks, and, uh, but usually for marching band, you want something that's white. I also had a question from Tom Hitt, and Tom asked me what famous drummer and author was the progeny of a championship rudimental drummer. And actually, I knew this one. I didn't have to look it up on the internet, Tom. The answer is Mickey Hart. Um, a lot of you know Mickey Hart as one of the drummers from the Grateful Dead. Uh, that's that's kind of where he built his career. But a lot of people don't know that he's also an ethnomusicologist. Um, an ethnomusicologist is somebody that studies the history of instruments and music. So Mickey uh, wrote uh, a number of books. Um, the best one, I think, is entitled Drumming at the Edge of Magic. And in that book, he kind of tracks the history of drums from the beginning of civilization until now. It's a great read, and every drummer should pick it up. Mickey Hart. Okay, my last two questions, I gotta take a sort of humorous note because it's my friends and family trying to mess with me. So I'll answer Maria's question first, and she asked me who is the greatest drummer of all time, I believe. Um, that's a matter of opinion, Maria, and all I gotta ask you is, who's in your CD player right now? That'll tell you everything you need to know. And uh, Matt, my brother, uh, asked me what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow, and to that I ask you back, is that an African swallow or European swallow? Thanks, guys. Uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook and uh, ask me any more questions, and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to um, post them on the blog in the upcoming weeks, and visit our website at worldofmusicerie.com. Thanks.